Another blue and yellow flag is unfurled in eastern Ukraine. Establishing it on our land, the soldiers say. As Ukrainian forces roll into Leman, signs that many Russian troops didn't make it out. Russia says its troops have withdrawn to avoid being surrounded by Ukraine's army. It was thought there were around 5,000 in the city, now back under Ukrainian control. Big wins could see Russia cross a line. The leader of Chechnya, a close Kremlin ally, said Moscow should consider using a low-yield nuclear weapon in response. Liman is a strategic city in the northeast Donetsk region. Since Russia captured it in May, they've transformed the city into a major logistics hub for troop deployments and ammunition supplies. Capturing Liman would allow Ukraine to completely mop up the northern part of the Donetsk region and move further into Luhansk. The Donetsk and Luhansk regions together make up the wider Donbass region. The area has been a major focus for Russia. Leman's capture is one of Russia's worst military defeats since the start of its invasion in February. Just a day after celebrations in Moscow's Red Square, after these two regions and two others were declared as Russia. All this makes a mockery of Vladimir Putin's big announcement yesterday demonstrating that he can't hold what he just annexed. The US president said the annexation was a sign Putin was struggling. Joe Biden had this warning for the Russian president. I want to say this again. America is fully prepared with our NATO allies to defend every single inch of NATO territory. Every single inch. So, Mr. Putin, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Every inch. Today, more details emerged of another attack on a civilian convoy, this time in the northeast. Ukraine's security service says women and children were shot dead by Russians at close range in no man's land. They were caught between a recently liberated town and an occupied one. Many Russians want no part in this. Hundreds have fled the country to avoid Putin's mass mobilization. Here, a new recruit gets his weapon. We don't know how many of these men have chosen to be here or what impact their stories home will have on public support for Russia's war. Well, I'm joined now by Oleksiy Goncharenko, who's a Ukrainian MP and a member of the Ukrainian delegation to the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe. Thank you so much for coming in. Extraordinary events in the past 24 hours. First of all, this successful offensive in the town of Le Mans. How significant is that? It is extremely significant. I, don't, I know this town very good. Uh, uh, previously, before the invasion, Gonchurenko Center, one of our network, walked there. So I've been there many times. And it is uh, strategically located. And it means it's really the biggest Russian defeat for quite a long time. And the Russian army and Russian units were enveloped there, encircled more than 5,000 troops. So it's the biggest from 1945, when in April, um, during the counteroffensive of Wehrmacht, uh, Russian Soviet troops were encircled. So this is a big military failure, and this is a big military success for Ukraine. And I am extremely happy with this. And it comes, of course, just the day after President Putin annexed this region and three others in Ukraine. Yeah, and this is the best answer to Putin from Ukrainian army and from Ukraine, because we never will accept this annexation. We can't leave our people under the genocide. Under the genocide, once again, it's not a political expression, it's a juridical one. According to United Nations Convention on Prevention of Genocide, there are five criteria and all five are met, unfortunately, on occupied territories. So we need to liberate our people and we are doing this, as you see, very successfully. But the reality is this, this annexation, even though it has been deemed to be illegal across the world, still poses a new threat to the war, doesn't it? Yeah, because, uh, again, this is a crime. This is, uh, uh, again, a new war crime from Putin. And also, he tries to cover with the, this, his military failures. 
but at the same time, it's the way to new escalation. And again, he threatened, he threatened the world with nuclear weaponry, like he sp spoke yesterday. Yes, exactly. So at this, you know, classic Putin-esque ceremony where he announced that, where he declared the annexation, he said that, you know, the annexed lands would be protected with all the forces and means at our disposal. Now, what do you think that means in reality? And before he said that, uh, he, he said, by the way, yesterday, that this is not the war against Ukraine, but against the West and Anglo-Saxons, and he accused the United States of using nuclear weaponry, meaning uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945, and saying that this is the precedent, so he, he underlined this. And for sure, that is a big threat. Uh, and but is it more than a threat, do you think? I think for the moment it's a, it's a bluff and he is just threatening. But everything can go, the, unfortunately, we can't say that it will not go this way. And I just want to remind you that Ukraine is the only nation in the human history which voluntarily gave up nuclear weaponry in 1994 under guarantees of the United States, United Kingdom and, and Russia, but we can laugh about it. But uh, United States and United Kingdom. And today I think this is the tone for a free world to say that using of nuclear weaponry will be suicide for Russia. I mean, at the same time as he's making these threats, President Zelensky called on NATO to fast-track Ukraine's entry into NATO. The NATO Gen Secretary General has already said this won't happen quickly. How do you read that? First of all, NATO Secretary General, with all respect, he is not making these decisions. This is a political decision of countries, member states of NATO. And in reality, Ukraine today uh, in the, is in the war for NATO, because Putin said, I have the war with NATO. And who is fighting there? Ukraine today, but with a, a weaponry support of our allies. So uh, I am a very big supporter of Ukraine being a member of the NATO. I think it's But it's not going to happen quickly, realistically, is it? Uh, it looks like not, but I would like to see how it happens, because once again, we are already in the war. We're already real allies. And I don't see any other security guarantees. And once again, our country is the, the, the only country in the world which gave up nuclear weapons. So I think this is so important. To threaten us with nuclear weaponry is even double cynical than any other country on the planet. I mean, there has been this huge unified support from NATO members from Europe. But do you worry that as this conflict escalates, as Putin makes more threats about, you know, pressing the nuclear button, that, that this could splinter the alliance um, that has supported Ukraine so far? I hope this will not happen. For us, all these threats, nuclear threats, you know, uh, we are already un under genocide. And for me, it's no big difference whether I will be killed with a machine gun, missile or nukes. But for the world, it's a big difference and it's real red line. And I think Putin showed yesterday that he should be stopped as soon as possible. Yesterday, he quoted Goebbels, by the way, yesterday is the anniversary of Munich Agreement of 1938, when Hitler annexed part of Czechoslovakia, and we know all what happened after. So I think we should make lessons from history, and we should stop aggressor before it's not too late. Alexei Goncharenko, thank you so much for talking thank to you. us today. Thank you.